Hello everyone, I'm former professional League of Legends commentator, Zyrene, and today I'm here to talk about how esports events across the world are under threat. Coronavirus is sweeping the planet, infecting thousands, and shutting events down everywhere. And you can see the arena is completely empty behind me, which is absolutely crazy. Normally, again, as I said, you'd have about 10 to 20,000 fans sitting in here. The Overwatch League's canceled events in South Korea and China. League of Legends LPL season was put on hiatus, and when it returns, all players will be required to complete a 14-day quarantine, and all the matches will be completed online. The Intel Extreme Masters Katowice tournament went ahead, but with no audience able to watch the games in person. And with all of this happening in the early stages of the virus, we have to cast our mind ahead and ask, what about the Fortnite World Cup? The biggest individual prize victory in competitive gaming history. Last year, the Fortnite World Cup was one of the biggest esports events of the year. 2.3 million people tuned in to watch the finals live, with 19,000 people attending to watch in person at the Arthur Ashe Stadium. And as of yet, Epic Games haven't revealed their esports plans for 2020. But with such a successful 2019 season, it would be surprising if they weren't planning anything at all. And could their plans be changing because of the impact of coronavirus? Coronavirus, in this case COVID-19, is the new viral infection that's been sweeping across the planet. It's a highly infectious virus that presents itself in a similar way to the flu, with the most severe symptoms more like pneumonia. It's mostly spread from person to person through cough droplets and sneezing, but can't live outside the human body for too long. It may be possible that a person can get the coronavirus by touching a surface or object that has the virus on it, and then touching their own mouth, nose, and possibly their eyes. And unfortunately, a packed esports stadium would be the perfect breeding ground for a COVID-19 outbreak. And when talking about coronavirus and its potential impact on the Fortnite World Cup, we should use the 2019 event as a model. It took place in New York in the middle of summer at a large tennis stadium that had been repurposed for the event. As well as the main stadium, the Flushing Meadows Corona Park was made into a kind of Fortnite festival. There were events all over the area, ranging from events and games to even a concert by Marshmello. Yo, I just wanna say thank you to Fortnite, thank you to Epic Games for having me out today. Usually in summer, you would expect a flu-like disease to stop spreading as quickly. There's this idea that the COVID-19 could be stopped in its tracks by the warming temperatures of the spring and summer, and it's an enticing idea. But usually milder coronavirus colds do tend to get set back a bit by the summer weather before springing back into full force in the following winter. These are diseases with seasonality. And at the moment, it's uncertain whether COVID-19 will act in the same way. The problem is this, this is a brand new virus agent. We have zero knowledge of the seasonality of this virus. If it doesn't, and it continues to spread across America, then New York is the perfect Petri dish for transmission. Coronavirus is currently seen as an inevitability in New York, and that's a worry for a lot of people. New York is well known for its reliance on public transport. People crammed into busy subway cars, jostling against one another in the morning rush of work. And if COVID-19 does begin to spread throughout the city that never sleeps, this will be the way it spreads the most. We could see numbers of infected people balloon incredibly quickly all across New York, putting the Arthur Ashe Stadium straight into the firing line. If being crammed into a subway car with around 50 people is a breeding ground for the virus, then the stadium is an even bigger risk. Last year, 19,000 people were crammed into the gigantic stadium it was a full house, the stadium has been around for 23 years now, and its design philosophies are pretty old school. Seats are really tight and mashed up against each other without much room to move away, and you're basically stuck with the people around you. And if someone sneezes and is infected without realizing and fails to catch their sneeze properly, then that's basically a whole stadium of people that are now at risk. Could Epic Games really risk the bad PR that could come from such an outbreak? It may not even take coronavirus infecting New York to see events like a 2020 Fortnite World Cup get canceled. Now that Washington has declared a state of emergency, it has been revealed that the officials in Washington had been considering canceling sporting events to try and stop the spread of the virus. Stadiums that typically host thousands of cheering fans are empty. Elite runners aren't racing down crowded streets lined with supporters. And some events have been canceled or postponed entirely. The cancellation of major events as mandated by the government is something we've already seen in other countries. 
In Sweden, the government has banned any public events that would have more than a thousand people in attendance to try and stop the spread of coronavirus. This came as a shock to many, as carnival season was about to begin in the country. And shows like the Geneva International Motor Show, which usually attracts around 500,000 visitors every year, have been completely shut down. If the government of the United States were to enact a similar response to the growing spread of coronavirus in the country, then any World Cup dreams Epic Games may have had for Fortnite would have been shut down before it could even begin. If you find it hard to believe that such a major event could be held back by the spreading disease, then you only have to look towards the League of Legends MSI 2020 tournament. It was announced by the global head of esports at Riot Games that the event would be put on hold until further notice. He said that the health and safety of the players and the fans would come first and foremost, and that fans, teams, partners, and players would just have to be patient until any new information is released. The MSI tournament is a major deal in the League of Legends world. It's an invitational tournament for all the winners of the regional spring splits, and is the final warm-up before the summer split begins, followed by the World Championship. The fact such a major esports event can be canceled should cast doubt on any esports events through the rest of the year, not just a potential Fortnite World Cup. And if we wanted to look at examples of major esports events in other Battle Royale games being canceled specifically, then we need to look no further than Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. PUBG Corp have postponed the PUBG Global Series, which was due to take place in Berlin in April. In a press release, they said that they were actively monitoring the spread of the latest coronavirus and that the dates and times of any regional qualifiers may also be subject to change. Now, COVID-19 has been affecting pretty much every esport out there. There's no reason to think Fortnite would be any different. So what can Epic Games actually do when it comes to COVID-19 and any plans they have regarding a potential Fortnite World Cup this year? The first and most obvious thing would to just not have one this year. As it stands, Epic Games haven't mentioned anything to do with a potential Fortnite World Cup, and by this point last year, we already knew that one was coming for the summer. If they just didn't mention one at this point and cancel any plans that they were potentially putting into motion, then no one would be any the wiser, and it would be like nothing had actually changed. If they still wanted to go ahead with the tournament though, there are a few potential routes that they could take. The first way they could do things is the same as how the Intel Extreme Masters tournaments handled things in Poland. Usually thousands of people who are fans of many different games would show up to the city of Katowice to watch their favorite players compete on the world stage. That was until the regional governor revoked their permits to hold a mass event due to the fears of coronavirus using the event as an easy spreading area. Now tickets were refunded and ESL probably lost a lot of money. The tournaments were still allowed to go on, but the only people allowed in the room were ESL's own event staff and the competitors themselves. Now, despite all this, the IEM event was a total success. Even though there were no people watching and screaming out support from the audience, the views on Twitch said it all. The finals of the CSGO tournament set a viewership record for a non-major Counter-Strike event, with analyst charts putting the final viewing figures at over 1 million. It set a new record for the ESL Intel Extreme Masters series and also brought in more peak viewers than the Berlin Major last year. Fortnite would only stand to do even better on Twitch if they were to go ahead with an audience-less tournament. Epic Games could take even more inspiration from IEM and do what ESL had planned to do in the first place before having their permits revoked. The original plan was for the ESL to perform health screenings on any attendees that would enter the event space to try and stop coronavirus from spreading. The screening would have included a temperature check with those that have high temperatures being turned away on a case-by-case -case basis. Any press, players, or special guests that had traveled through China or South Korea had already been asked to provide a valid health certificate or to attend additional health screenings. According to ESL, they also had extra staff on hand as well as sanitation stations. All visitors would even have been educated on hygiene measures like washing hands and the appropriate way to catch a sneeze. I mean, it might be hard to screen the 19,000 people that Epic had at last year's Fortnite World Cup if the 2020s event is planned to be as big, but it would be a great way to keep a lid on potential COVID-19 cases. If Epic didn't want to have either players or audience members in an event space, there is one incredibly easy thing that Epic Games could do. They could just hold the tournament online. This would raise a lot of concerns about potential lag or ping disputes. It would also raise concerns about hacking. Epic Games were very strict on what could and couldn't be used at last year's World Cup, but if they wanted to have an event with no coronavirus fears whatsoever, then this is really the only way that they could do it. 
All of the qualifying events for 2019's event were conducted online, and it shouldn't be too hard for them to do the same thing for the finals itself. I know it's a bummer, but if Epic Games is going to want to do something major to follow up from 2019's successful event, something tells me that having a purely online event or an event that doesn't have any audience members at all probably wasn't in their plans before this coronavirus outbreak. With a sold out stadium and a pretty fun Fortnite festival styled side event, it's safe to say that Epic Games probably came pretty close to recouping their investments into Fortnite's 2019 World Cup. Tickets alone were selling for between $25 to $80, meaning Epic made anywhere between $500,000 and $1.6 million from ticket sales alone. That's not even taking into account all the sales of World Cup related skins, merch, and the revenue made in the festival area. What will Epic Games decide to do from this point out remains a mystery. Leaks from December seem to imply that there are going to be qualifiers in not just creative solos and duos this year, but trios as well. And Epic clearly have some sort of plan for competitive fans going forward in 2020. They just aren't willing to reveal it until they get the game performance under control. And who knows if coronavirus has had an impact on their planning going forward. We'll just have to wait and see what they reveal in the coming months. We'll keep you guys completely updated here at Pro Guides. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.